Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, April 6th edition of the uh, weekly community call for chaos. This is the first one of the month, so we usually try to do um, a roundtable of um, I don't know if that's the right word, but we try to go around and do the, the working group updates um, and give any other big updates uh, for people who um, don't have an opportunity to join us on the weekly meetings. Um, this monthly one is usually a pretty good one if you just need to, you know, kind of get caught up on what's happening in the chaos universe. So, um, so that's on the agenda and we do have quite a few other things. So we're going to jump right in and start on item number one. And um, let me just make sure that everyone has the minutes really quick. One more time. Uh, okay, so item number one is um, a few weeks ago, we had talked about changing mailing lists from the, the old fashioned ones that we were using <laughs> that with the interface from like 1995. So, um, but I don't know like what happened with that. So I have put this on the agenda. I just like, if I'm supposed to be doing something, someone needs to tell me um, or if there's any action items or, or uh, what we need to do with that. Yep, so I can comment on this. So really the motivation here, right, was that I think the LF is kind of deprecating their support for mailman. That's really what's happening here. So um, I think we're one of the last. That's entirely unacceptable. That's, that's, that's using it. So um, this is less of a conversation that we had years ago when we were talking about doing this anyway. Um, so I think honestly, at this point, when I saw your note there, Elizabeth, you know, maybe it's just a series of steps that we need to take to make sure that we successfully tell everybody that we're making this change and perhaps have two lists running for a while. I'm totally thinking out loud here and then you know, final deprecation, because we, we can't just move people over. I think that's against the rules, you know, to just copy names of people. We can't sign people up for mail lists, so without their consent. Um, so I think it's really just about that, what people's thoughts are. I mean, as long as we... Are... Sorry, go ahead, Sean. I, I would prefer to be re just automatically subscribed to the new list. It's just a different technical implementation of a list I'm already part of. I agree. It's the same list. We're not changing anything except for how we deliver what people already agreed to. I guess if there's if any changes in data handling, it shouldn't be an issue. But if there are any slight changes, it might be worth socializing before and allowing people to opt out versus just migrating everyone. But assume that everyone will be and you have to choose to opt out. Okay, that'll work. So like a couple of week kind of, we're making this change, let us know if you don't wanna be on the new list. <laughs> just ping us directly, okay. Or provide the link to opt out option. <laughs> Okay, so as far as like setting up the new list, um, how, how do we go about doing that? It's already set up. Oh, all right, <laughs> checked, done. Uh, did we, we have one for the DNI also, mm -hmm. and yeah. the, I think there was also like the board had one. And yeah, I'll connect. I actually don't think the board has one at the, the new list on, at the moment. I think okay. it's community and, and the DEI one. So okay. Can you, okay. Could you could you mute Ayush? Um, so, yeah. I think we have four mailing lists right now. We have the main chaos community list. We have the diversity and inclusion list. We have a grimoire list, which I don't think is active. So maybe we can talk with the grimoire lab. Um, community to see if they still need that list. Uh, we have one for um, code of conduct violations. That's also implemented as a mailing list, but we can change that to, to a different email. We can just update that uh, with forwarding to the individual email addresses. And then the board. 
I'll have it named board, not members. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like there might be a few more lists to make. And I think honestly, they're made right now. They're just marked as inactive by Brian Horner, who set these up. So I guess maybe the next set is for me to reach out to Brian and just kind of ensure that we have um, these four, maybe five lists, like kind of ready to go. And then the next step could be sending out an email to the list, to Sophia's point, maybe for a couple weeks saying, hey, we're changing. Let us know if you want to opt out. And then a week later, something, hey, don't forget we're changing. Let us know if you want to opt out. Um, and then at the end of two weeks, we go ahead and start the new list or we'll have to migrate people over names. It'll take a little bit of time and then just shut down the new list and, or, sorry, <laughs> shut down the old list and start the new one. Have, um, did you get any insights on archive, whether we can move the archive to the new service? Uh, I don't recall asking that. So I'll ask that again when I reach out this time. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this? Okay, cool. And I put in the um, agenda minutes that I would be the one to reach out to the community and let them know. But Matt, if you would prefer to do that, totally fine with me. You know, I'm awesome at not doing things. So <laughs> anytime someone wants to do something, Completely fine with me. So you what, you 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 write really friendlier emails than I do. So <laughs> you do. That's, that's quite an accomplishment because you write pretty <laughs> nice emails. I'll take it. Yes, I will take that all day. That's very nice of you to say that. Thank you. Okay, so I think we're good to go on that. We have kind of a plan in place, so that makes me happy. Um, let's go on to number two, and this says new blog post on the website by Shoya, and there is a link in the minutes, which we can post here. I have not seen this blog post. Shame on me. So let me just post this here. It, it just, oh, it went just report a few minutes okay, ago. Good. So. <laughs> okay, so we'll um, get it together, Elizabeth. You need to. <laughs> I know, right? What am I even doing with my life? I don't know. Um, oh, this is very cool. So she's written about the GitHub 2020 Digital Insight Report, and we will um, drop that in the minutes here. So anyone who wants to read that can do so. Um, right here it is. And we will, um, it actually will automatically go to Twitter, but um, if anybody wants to um, help promote that and do the retweeting thing um, that you all do so well, um, just follow Chaos. Uh, chaos proj on Twitter, and then you can just retweet. That'd be great and help show you out um, to get a little bit more eyes on that. Any comments on this? Questions? Something y'all want to say? I'm really happy that she did that. That's awesome. Yeah, 100%. We will always love blog posts. So anybody that wants to say something metric y, chaos y, have at it. All right, then I guess we will move along to number three. Um, just to, I think we've talked about this the last few times. So in case anyone's missed it, we are doing a standardization project across all the working groups to kind of get us a little more organized and a little more standard in preparation for some automation um, primarily that we'd like to do uh, when it comes time for like metrics releases and things. So um, I just wanted to shout out to Yash and Ritik and Georg um, and I don't, if there's anyone else working on this, I don't think there was, but if there is, we want to make sure we, we recognize that. Um, they've all been working super hard because um, there's a lot, <laughs> a lot to do, um, but we are at the end of this uh, project, we'll be very um, efficient and very standardized and we will 
look amazing. So, so, and it'll set us up for future um, automation and, and future uh, efficiencies. So thank you to you three very much from behalf of the community. We really appreciate your work there. Any questions for that team from anybody? So Kevin, was this what the I, metric thing that broke today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, uh, I guess I'm working on this as well, uh, but I, but I don't need recognition. Uh, uh, I'm we just joking. You anyway. I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, uh, no, if the when that when that changed it's made, just uh, drop a uh, drop a line into the GitHub repo so that I can go in and and change the links on the website side. Otherwise, it, it will break the uh, the metrics uh, that we've released on the website. Where do you want that issue? Do you want it in the website repo? Yep, just in the website repo is fine. Okay. So. so point being here is that there were some changes made to risk, like some refactoring of the repository and the, it cascaded out to the metrics on the web. Like they weren't sorry. showing. Yeah, sorry, Kevin, I, I missed that. We merged that and I forgot to inform you. I, I missed it as well. I was aware that that one was happening. Uh, so it was, it. Uh, it's all good. It, Together and I, we can and I fixed it and I fixed it right away. So we are good. He Billion dollar losses work. incurred. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions, concerns, anything? Uh, I kind of like the blog post. Thanks to everybody. Because this is, this is uh, created quite a bit of volume and work across the repository. So thanks for tracking that and asking for changes and merging stuff. Kind of looking right at you, Georg. You can't tell that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm always concerned when Zoom institutes a feature where you can tell where you're looking. But um, <laughs> looking at you, Gator, so thanks for doing that. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let's move along then to item number four, which is our working group update. Um, do we have anyone here from Common? who's usually attending the common group that wants to give a quick update in Don's place. We do not, apparently. So well, um, I can tell you, I mean, it's continuing to work on, on metrics. I mean, this is going to be the update from common, um, I had just, I was jotting down, this is the reason that I knew some of the risk links had broken. I was kind of jotting down what some of the new metrics that had come out. Um, and so reviewed cycle duration with a, within a change request was a new one. Burstiness had come out and technical fork had come out. So there were some nice releases, I think, from common in the last round, and probably the thorniest one was technical fork because we just we just could never figure that one out, but I think we did. So thanks to everybody for those latest released metrics. And I think the one that is currently being worked on, if memory serves, I probably should have looked at this beforehand, but I believe it's the time waiting for reviewer, no, for submitter action. Uh, is the one that we're currently working on right now. So if that's something that's interesting to you, feel free to join the common working group. Uh, on whatever day that is, Thursdays, I guess, mm -hmm. every other Thursday. Any questions about common that we can stumble through and try to try to answer for you the best we can? I think the no? uh, okay. collaboration okay. platforms metric is, I think we're working on that one as well. trying to enumerate wh where community activity happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go on to risk. I'm looking at you, Sean, you wanna give um, a quick update? So the quick update for risk is that we continue to work on 
metrics related to dependencies and are actively working on a number of them. Um, we also are, uh, merged a pull request that standardized our repo. So Team Risk is uh, on board with the new standard repos. And um, at this point, we're just, um, we've got some metrics, uh, language level upstream dependency enumeration, which we're gonna try to clean up that name um, under development. And then um, us PDX approved licenses is in development and Free Software Foundation approved licenses possibly um, is in development as well. So we're looking kind of as uh, licensing types uh, as a early sort of low hanging fruit type of signal of dependency risk that we can pursue. And I imagine we'll build more metrics as we as we get towards the summer release, which is geez, probably only three months away now. End risk. I think one other quick comment on that was that I believe they um, decided to kind of pull together the dependencies in one focus area, whereas it yes. had been split out before, but now it's all just kind of under one umbrella focus area in the risk group. So yes. it kind of helped with making things a little clearer and not quite so granular. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I had a, I forgot I had a domestic disturbance of some sort with children on the last risks call. So I was a little bit, uh, distracted so thanks for thanks for clearing thanks for bringing that forward <laughs> that'll happen from time to time <laughs> when they're here all the time it occasionally does happen yes <laughs> so i'm I had surprised a it's not happening right now <laughs> no it's not right now we're good back in the group um with i'm um, again looking at georg do you know if Grimoire Lab is is looking at licensing. I know that the answer has been no historically. I'm just the reason I'm asking is just because it's always that alignment between the development of metrics and into tooling. I'm just always trying to see where these points of connection are occurring. The Grimoire Lab suite does have a module for licenses called Graal which is, was developed as a Google Sum of Code project or really advanced. It was developed by Valerio some time ago, but Valerio is no longer part of Petrugia, no longer part of the Grimoire Lab community. So there's no activity on that module and it's not supported by Petrugia itself. So it's currently sits idle in the open source community. Gotcha. And that's Graal. That's the G-R-A-A-L one. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Any other questions or comments about risk? I guess I have a general one. Um, within the dependency work, we've alluded the need to at some point maybe reference other metrics across mm. chaos um, and yes. that dependencies are in, in nature very complex and it might mm -hmm. be like if you're looking for other ways to add more depth to the way that you measure this then we would suggest say looking at some metrics from the common working group um, and i was curious if there are other examples about cross-referencing metrics from other working groups and if, if that's something we can add to our template I, 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 I don't, we should, I agree. Um, I think that's part of what's motivated the standardization of the working groups, but I don't think we yet have a mechanism for like when common did it with other working groups, as I recall, it was really uh, sort of hand knitting the links between the working groups. So pointing directly at the metrics that another working group built um there was there's no sort of searchable index or network view of of the metrics which i think might be called for by some of the work that risk is doing because as soon as you identify a dependency you want to know what the health and sustainability of all those dependencies are and so you you end up in a kind of a different model of looking at the health and sustainability of your own project um so i think we're going to have to do that on risk with dependencies perhaps more than any working group has had to previously. Okay, but it sounds like within common, we can look at what, uh, what they've done already in the past with mm -hmm. cross-referencing and maybe either build on that or suggest something that's a little bit more generic. Yeah. 
Thanks. I think this That's is related. Oh, sorry, okay. I was going to say, I think this is related to a couple of discussions we've had uh, recently. Uh, one of them is about uh, editing the template to have guidance <coughs> on how to link to other working group uh, metrics and, and other metrics in general. Uh, and then the other discussion we had is, is related to how the metrics are presented. Uh, and that's actually part of one of the, uh, one of the Google Summer of Code projects. Uh, rather than presenting, rather than always presenting the metrics by working group, it would make sense for us to think about other ways to, to present these collections of metrics. I agree. I mean, it's uh, working groups are kind of how we're creating them. And as we develop more metrics, I think we probably need a more human friendly way of organizing their presentation for people. So I think it would help with utilization a bit. Do you see that as a website thing or a GitHub thing? I see it as a website thing myself. That's, uh, that's how I've been seeing it as well, but I am biased. <laughs> Well, I think web websites offer more flexibility in context. So I like, I like that. I think it will give us a little bit more flexibility, but it also means building something new. Yeah. Further, I would add to the dependency uh, in that group is like, we tried to clarify some terminologies. Like there was so much confusion on the transitive uh, dependency, indirect dependency, we tried to like uh, clarify those uh, terminologies so that we have the same frame of work when we are defining those uh, metrics around dependency. Vinod, I think that's a good point because I think it kind of alludes to the need to have a separate glossary, um, which I think could be something if we're thinking about a broader reference architecture for all the metrics. It's also metrics and terminology, um, which is what we were thinking about just in the context of dependencies, but I know we've, we've had that in other working groups and metrics as well, where we've had to decide, this is how we're defining this thing. Um, and maybe we need a sort of a central place for that. Yeah, maybe a glossary in terms like we have a kiosk definition and then examples of like how this term is used on the different platforms, even like on the GitLab or, GitLab or other platforms. We see a lot of confusion around around that terminology. I agree. I mean, we we definitely discussed it a lot in the last first meeting. I mean, all the notes from it are all those different definitions. I mean, I think what the group needs will bring back to the larger community is some some boundaries and definition around those things. I mean, I think that's. That's why we're discussing what we're discussing right now. I would, I really like the idea of this is kind of one, this is before the glossary. So this is about the collections of metrics. Mm -hmm. um, I like that better than simply linking between like metric to metric, you know, like worrying about those. We can do it, but that can get kind of thorny kind of quickly. Um, so I'm just listening to the conversation. I was immediately thinking about like under our initiatives that is like bundles, collections, whatever it might be, where we tell a story about why you might want to bring certain collections of metrics together. Because I think Sean, you do this like when you're working with Zephyr, right? You're bringing together a variety of different metrics to tell a mm -hmm. story of some yeah. sort metrics and filters and you know, yeah you, yeah and it's you know it, it starts with pull request merge success and how long that takes those are common questions and immediately sort of drifts into how are we treating newcomers are they coming back and that's building the community and then it quickly as you build a software asset the, the dependency problem starts to sort of lurch toward the top of your list so, yeah, I mean, those three things seem to be quite common. And de dependencies have been operationalized up until this point as just through entirely a licensing view, which Augur provides right now. And I think that's had some utility. It's helped people understand code risk, but it doesn't really 
give them that software dependency sustainability understanding that we're pursuing now. So the uh, the kind of the prototype displays <clears throat> that that I've created so far have actually been connected to those initiatives. So I, I have a prototype that basically looks at all of the metrics that go into the uh, the diversity and inclusion event badging. Uh, and then I have one that would connect to the, the community reports. So we, we could build those based on community reports, dashboards, uh, the, the badging things. Uh, mm -hmm. Alternately, we could, we could also uh, build them based on uh, issues and poll requests, right? These are all the metrics that have been defined across chaos that point at understanding issues. Yep. Or, that sounds like a tagging and filtering option. Yes, correct. Yep, that is how, that's how we're, that's kind of how we're looking at it. I was thinking of a Morris collections of like narrative stories. So you want to foster new contributors to your project, you know, over the early stages of, of a new open source project. Here are some things that can be drawn together that can help give you insight at that point in time. Um, are you concerned about people leaving your project for, I'm totally making these things up, but like, are you concerned about people leaving your project in favor of another open source project? You know, how, how can you come to understand that migration and what can you do to try to, to, I don't whatever, like understand that more deeply, like more narrative stories about why you might bring metrics together. I like the idea. It's kind of a, you develop a scenario and within that scenario, what are the metrics you can look around and tell that story? I think these, uh, these would need to be bounded though. You wouldn't want too many metrics uh, attached to these, these ideas, right? Maybe look at, you know, 10 metrics that can give you insight on this one thing at most. More, more than that would uh, probably lead to confusion. It might be interesting to lump them by um, uh, uh, size of project or, or age of project. You know, like new projects generally probably have, you know, a certain set of things that they care about versus like an old established project might be looking at a, a totally different set of, of things. So to your point, Matt, um, I think that is really cool. I think that's a really great idea. So that would be a little more compelling for someone who comes to the site instead of just being presented with a list, a laundry list, and they all are equal, you know, equally presented. So it's really hard to know, like, where do you start? So, but if you see a story that fits what you're, what, how you identify right there at your, with your project, then that will be way better uh, and way more effective for, for the people who are trying to use this. Like, where do I start kind of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be, it would be nice if we could link those to uh, an auger or a Grimoire lab dashboard. Or provide. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I, mean, I think we can. I mean, one of the, one of the tasks that auger has for Google summer of code is to do risk work. Like really just focused on building out some of these metrics. And this that could kind of replace the, the community reports if we wanted to move away from the, the community reports. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, it, I, they could contribute to the community reports. I think, I think the community reports, whatever form they take in the future will include some of the work of all of us. I mean, it won't just be Augur, it won't just be, well, it won't just be Augur. I mean, there's some great stuff in Grimoire Lab that I'm sure we would want to continue to include. So this is a great conversation and I really hate to kind of uh, truncate it, it before it's <laughs> before it's it's completely you know worked its way out. But yeah. um, we do have a lot of other things to talk about. So let's maybe table this or not table it if you're in the UK but talk about this next time, oh, if that's okay with everybody. Are we okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do that. 
Um, thank you, everyone. That was that was fantastic. I really <coughs> like these ideas. So let's quickly move along to the evolution working group and just a quick update about that. What's what's happening there? Um, since the last since the last month, really the biggest things that we've done is start work on working on some new metrics. Um, and maybe we proposed, I think it was last weekly meeting, the possibility of like the boundaries. We've got some boundaries that we discussed about when do we put a metric update through community review and had a long discussion about that. And I think when the when the evolution groups meet meets again next week, um, we'll, we'll we'll sort of work towards using those guides that were provided in the either last week's discussion or two weeks ago about you know, what should we, when should we put it through community review? Um, I don't want to bring that all back up. We're, we're working on metrics and we're going to clean up our repo because our repo is a hot mess. Um, <laughs> uh, so um, that's, that's kind of, uh, and we got a pull request from um, one potential Google Summer of Code student who's cleaned up some other repos that uh, took on evolution and um, just a couple small changes and I think we'll actually get cleaned up pretty fast. Awesome. Any questions or comments for Sean for evolution? We meet on Thursday again next week. So on Thursday, Wait a minute. we meet next week on whatever day we meet. Yeah, I think I'm going to start. Wednesday. Putting... It's Wednesday at 9 a.m. <laughs> I'm going to start putting a link to the to the calendar thing or something in these minutes because I can never remember either so yeah. I hate to make everyone go look so okay awesome thank you so much Sean yep. you're doing good good work there hanging in there uh, okay let's move on to the DEI and the DI, DNI badging uh, program sorry initiatives there um, anyone want to take a stab I don't know Matt G if you want to I can if you don't uh go ahead because it's super cool to talk about. <laughs> so. I just talk a lot in these meetings, so I don't want to hog it. But um, yeah, DNI badging is exploding with applications. Um, we had 11 come in at one time. Um, they were all related. They were part of the KubeCon uh, group. So um, and all of those related activities and um, mini conferences around that. So congratulations to the whole team. I mean, it's just fantastic. Um, this the exposure that we're getting from that DNI badging initiative. Um, you know, Matt Snell is just doing a, an amazing job, and he's been training a bunch of new reviewers, myself included. So um, yeah, it's been it's been fantastic, and it's a really interesting thing. So I think we're we're good on reviewers, but if anyone is interested in becoming a reviewer, I'm sure that Matt would be more than welcome or more than happy to um, give you an orientation just in case, because I think that there are some more applications that are coming. Uh, what he said in this meeting this morning, the badging uh, meeting this morning. So um, yeah, so if anyone is interested, it's super easy. It's not difficult, um, but it is very, very interesting work. And so um, feel free to reach out to Matt Snell um, or, or me and I can put you in touch with them. There is an application too uh, that I can send to you. They can fill out. Um, anything else to add to that, Matt? G, I would just like to say, I mean, we, we badged KubeCon, right? With our biggest... <laughs> The biggest application yet so that's super cool and it's just um and wendy I, I think it's her name based on her handle is just been amazing in terms of not only the applications but responding to the comments and questions and the issues i absolutely love how this is an open and transparent process so you can click that link there and click on the link that's in the minutes and then click on any of the badged events and see the whole discussion that goes on the checklist and the discussion occurring out in the open. Um, I think it's fantastic. So I'm just, it's just super cool. And, and this really, honestly, this kind of started in full, this project kind of, or initiative kind of started in full in 2021, to be honest with you. So I know it was open, but our first badge was late in 2020 and the rest have been all in 2021. The only other thing I would add is that, you know, one of the goals of that, that initiative is to help organizers find ways to improve. 
And I think that some of those conversations have actually um, affected how they're going to um, present data, especially around like demographics and things like that. So, you know, it's not just like, hey, they did this thing. Here's a badge back and forth. But there's actually like this um, this collaborative effort to just make the events better in general. So it was very cool to see that some of our questions prompted them to make some changes on their end as well. So um, I think that's the, really the whole point is that we're just trying to make everything better um, through this process. So um, that's just fantastic to see. I'm really excited about that. It's really great. I would love to share a story like that on the podcast. So if there is any particular event where you think this is a really good story, please ask if they would be happy to speak on the podcast. Yeah, as soon as, I, I think Wendy, she, and we can certainly ask, um, There, we're still going through them, um, but I think when it's all said and done, then I think definitely a good candidate for that. So that's a great idea. You said some of this is being tracked in the open. Is this something that we can review the progress of? Yeah, so if you, in the minutes, like if you just click on that event diversity and inclusion link. And then do you see the table? Those are all, so the way that this works is an issue is opened by, in the open by an individual and then all comments are done there. So there's a review checklist that's assigned to two reviewers and the reviewers can go through the checklist and then ask questions openly with the expectation of having the responses also addressed openly. So that was kind of an important component for us to do this totally out in the open. So you might find some of the comments interesting. Yeah, no, I think that I'm, this is a personal plug, not a plug, but interest here because I was working with the Kubernetes community on their community survey. Um, mm -hmm. And there were some issues around asking demographic questions. And part of it was because the CNCF wanted to have more influence over what was asked and when. So it's just interesting to see that it's now being asked as part of this. So I'm wondering where that handoff is. And if we were dealing with totally different people, because that could happen, um, but that could hopefully improve our process of getting things like that into the right place. So just more of a like trying to fix a, another dysfunction and thankfully everything is publicly documented. Perfect, that's the great, great that it's moving in the right direction. <laughs> cool. And um, just from the DEI working group, uh, I think the main thing is still working on some metrics, um, some new metrics, um, just as everybody else is doing. Um, but I, I will don't say that think there was a there was a revision of the metric that we had talked about. So one of the one of the metrics was with respect to speaker demographics, and we wanted to ensure that. So we modified that metric, and it's going into the badging program to ensure that if there's a selection process of keynotes, there's a way to ensure diversity in keynotes as well as diversity in the teams that are selecting keynotes as well as how the conference is arranged to make sure that there's no people involved in the, in the conference um, who are marginalized as, as part of that scheduling. So this was an addition, this was kind of something that revealed itself to us as we were going through this process as well that we need to strengthen. Any other comments or questions? Okay, we have seven minutes left. We have quite a lot of things, so we might not get to everything, apologies. Uh, let's talk about value real quick. Vinod, do you wanna give a quick update? Yeah, so in the value working group, we released a project popularity metric. And right now the group is uh, focused on organization uh, value, especially like how organization drive value, how they bring the value to open source community and how they influence the open source community. This all discussion evolved around share of voice suggestion from which we uh, came up with the idea of these three different metrics. So, our next meeting is on this Thursday at 9 a.m. So you all can join and we are working on these three metrics right now. 
Who has questions or comments? A project popularity was released. Uh, when, when was that released? In the last release. Oh, OK. 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 Thank you, Vinod, for being so efficient with the meeting time <laughs> and every, you had it all together. I love it so much. Um, OK. Let's go ahead and move on. Um, today, we actually hosted, well, I say we, like I did any of it. Um, Sean actually did all of it, uh, hosted the first Chaos Software Tutorial Workshop this mm -hmm. morning. Yep. Um, so I'd love to hear how that went. And also remind everyone there's another one happening on Friday from 8 to 10 US Central. Yep. And so we had five people. Um, and I think some people got a lot out of it. And I'm, it's hard to know. It wasn't a real chatty group, but we, we talked through and walked through an Augur installation and encountered sort of the real issues that you encounter when you're setting up a Python development environment using a database and, and web servers and those kinds of things. And so um, we actually updated some Augur documentation that'll be released here later today. Um, try to make it slowly a little bit more clear for folks. Um, and, and so, yeah, this has been, a, so far it's been a great, I mean, it's been one, but it's it's been great because it's helped helped us to help us to see the holes in our docs and um, also um, just I think we were able to show both the Augur tool and the Augur Community Reports tool, and we updated both of them during the hackathon um, based on discussions and feedback. So I thought it was I thought it was I mean it was a I had a good first experience myself, um, and I'm hopeful that you know that will continue, you know. Was this announced on Twitter? <coughs> I think so. I, yes, okay. I'm sure it was. Yeah, actually. several times. Yeah. And we'll keep announcing because I know it takes a lot <laughs> to, to sift through, to burst through the noise of Twitter. So we'll keep tweeting about them as well. We And there's a whole series of these, which is now I see on the website. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so the link is in the minutes if anybody wants to sign up. There's various topics, um, Jupyter Notebooks and RESTful API development, other things. So take a look at that. And they're all free. And they're all at the same times, 8 to 10 a.m. U.S. Central times. Short, uh, a short blog post might be, might be nice for this. True. It might be nice. <laughs> Does someone want to write it? If you, I, mean, uh, I can write it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at the uh, what's been tweeted so far. Maybe I can just throw something together real quick. Okay, I can help you actually with that. I don't mean to be snarky and throw it back at you. I'm, I'm more than happy to help. Anybody have any questions for Sean on these? Thanks for doing them, Sean. Great for yeah, everyone. Sean, you rock. Not really, but thank you. Okay, we have two minutes. Um, quickly, uh, you want to talk about the privacy statement, Matt? Yeah, I fixed what I didn't do last time. So it's in there if you want to take a look. And I also sent it to folks at the LF just to see if they need to approve it or if it's kind of, you know, low bar enough that they're like, whatever. So I don't have a response yet. Thank you for doing that, Matt. Um, GSOC applications are due April 13th. So if you're a student and you want to do it, you better do it quickly. Um, the next one is all things open, CFP is open. That's just an FYI. We can talk about it next week if we want to talk about it more. Um, I really, sorry to just jump ahead. I really want to hear the podcast update from Georg. So um, Georg, you want to talk about what's going on with Chaos Cast? Oh, Chaos Cast is about to turn one year. We have one more month until the first release episode was released. And yeah, we have uh, currently four, more than 4,000 downloads across all of our 31 episodes. The last one really exploded with more than 600 downloads in the first seven days. So that was a huge, huge jump. Let's see with the next one, whether we gained some regular listeners.
Does anyone have questions about Chaos Cast? No, well, not a question. Good job, Georg. I mean, I think you really kind of saw this a year ago mm -hmm. and yeah. pushed for it. So, so thank you so much. And Excellent. I'd also maybe like to say thanks to Sustain, who is helping support uh, Chaos Cast. So thanks to them as well. Yeah, and thank you to all, to you. you. You were one of the first panelists. <laughs> thank you to all of our panelists who joined. So it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy finding interesting stories and then having those conversations. Actually, I will say that in the, so just as a note, our the chaos project, part of, some of it is funded by the Alfred Sloan Foundation, and I could send it out. And Sophia, actually, the, the podcast that you were on was recognized in a newsletter that they sent out. So, <laughs> so they're also taking a look at, at chaos cast, which is cool. Okay, we are at time. Uh, anybody have any final quick comments, thoughts, anything before we go? Nope, thank you. Um, <laughs> all right then. Oh, sorry, I have a oh. quick one. Um, while we were talking, I outlined a maybe a blog because that's where my head is right now. Um, what is your process for blogs from contributors? You submit a PR to the website repo adding a markdown and then Kevin adds it to the website. Uh, it's in the, yeah. the community folder uh, and inside the community folder, the, uh, the, news, the news folder within the community folder. I can give you a link if you'd like. Okay. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Sophia, for asking about that. Look forward to reading time? that. Uh, just, just a second. I, I navigated away from the page, so. I added the contributing file that has the description in the chat. I'm working on a blog for Google and I'm also half working on a side blog, which is all the things that are going wrong. <laughs> um, so I figured that would be more fun for chaos in terms of other people that are just dealing with messy data. Yeah. There's a lot of messy data. Well, Google kicked some serious butt at the Supreme Court uh, this week. So that that's off to you all. Yeah. I didn't know how that was going to go. It's like, what, been a lawsuit since like 2013. Such a dumb lawsuit, though. I'm glad that <laughs> an interface definition is a copy. I don't know. So, Woo. all right, we're going to wrap it up and All let right. everyone See go. You, all right. Bye. And I will see everyone later. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.